Hey everybody, this is Mike. Welcome back to the Z Motorsports shop and channel. Um, got a uh, contractor friend of mine that owns a uh, um, electrical contracting business. He's got a couple of these little, uh, their little import um, suitcase style 2000 watt uh, sine wave, I think it's pure sine wave uh, generator <clears throat> that's uh, powered by a little Yamaha engine. So. Anyway, he said that they uh, haven't used them in a while, and they were we used them for on a job the other day, and one didn't run, <clears throat> and the other one was hunting and surging really bad up against the, the governor and whatnot, so I figured it's probably carburation if they haven't used it in a while. So uh, he asked me if I'd take a look at them, so I dropped them off today, and I'm going to uh, tear into them and check them out. So um, I've already got the cover off of this side. Uh, this exposes the carburetor, um, lines go over here it's on the other side where the pull start and the fuel shutoff is, is located. So I'm going to go ahead, maybe I'll uh, change camera angles and bring it in and show uh, a little more detail on what All I'm right, doing. Alright, so here's the carburetor located right here. Go ahead and pull, this looks like a little breather off. And then... Pull the air intake uh, off. Actually, this is just a stud sticking out of the engine. So when you pull this nut off, as well as one on the other side, um, the whole carburetor should slide right off. This back one back here, I need to use a 10 millimeter socket. This little quarter inch drive is all you need on that. Just couldn't get a wrench on it. So there's that out of the way. It just pulls out of the air cleaner. And then uh, the fuel tank's in the way, of course. So I'm going to have to pull that. Uh, Gonna have to pull this probably this side and pull this top cover off. And let me pull that cover off real quick. All right. So in order to get this side cover off to get the fuel tank out of the way, you got to pull. There's six screws to hold the front cover on. Six screws that hold the back cover on where the exhaust is at. And then there's three. Oh, uh, but I think. Six millimeters um, with ten millimeter bolt um, back here, and I got one that's spinning. Doesn't want to. Doesn't want to play nice. All right, so we had to go a little more intrusive than I thought. So there's three bolts along the bottom here. Once you get those, you have to pull the. the the rubber cap back on the top. The fuel tank can just sit there, but once you get it out, you can raise the fuel tank up enough to slide that carburetor off. It hits this bulbous, this bottom piece of the tank, and you can't get the carburetor off. So once you slide the carburetor off, there's a couple of screws with some standoffs. And this top sensor or uh, switch comes off. That's laid it off to the side. The cable um, where it sticks through, I just took my uh, rule and measured it and I had a quarter inch of stick out so I make sure and get that set back in the right place So let's go over to the bench now and uh, tear the carburetor apart. All right, so I got the carburetor off Like I said, this is how it goes on that other piece. There's the, where the standoffs were the cable had protruded through this exactly um, quarter of an inch So let's pull this bowl Off or I got some crap there. Let's Pull this bowl off and see what the inside looks like. There we go. The bugger was stuck on there pretty good. 
actually doesn't look too bad. There's a little bit of little bit of stuff down in there. Not too bad though. Let's see if we got something stuck in one of the jets. clear the emulsion tube. There's a little bit of stuff in that. Okay. So I'm going to go over here to the solvent tank and just kind of blow, spray some brake cleaner, some carb cleaner through this and clean these, blow the chase to some air. Okay, got everything clean. Let's go ahead and uh, reassemble everything now. The emulsion tube back in. Jet back in. Okay. Put the needle and float back in place. Grab my plunger or my pump. Make sure it uh, holds pressure. Right, got my little uh, pump here. Want that to hold a few pounds. Put a little pressure on it. Should hold a few pounds pressure. fell out of it. So make sure we orientate this correctly. There's how that went on and this came over here. We'll go back over and put the uh, Put this back on the engine. engine now it's just going to go back in reverse order. So, to start with, we'll uh, put the little standoffs on that. Okay. So there's that. Let's get the fuel line hooked back up. Cable. Go ahead and 
set up my measurement there. That's an eight millimeter wrench. Yeah, we got an eight millimeter wrench to hold that. Snug that down. Okay. Now go ahead and raise the tank back up. Give us some slack with the front control panel, which is where my problem wide on removal I didn't have enough slack there we go okay Make sure that's all the way down into the uh, air box or you'll uh, get in filtered air into the engine, which is not good. I'm going to go ahead and fire this up and get it adjusted before, I'm going to clean the air filter first, then fire this up and get it adjusted before I put the covers and back on. All right, so I uh, went ahead and checked. I pulled the spark plug, cleaned it off, checked the gap on it. Gap was good. I put a spark in the, uh, test indicator in here. Checked it out while I was at it. I also pulled the little spark arrestor out and cleaned it. Um, I'll fire it up and blow whatever carbon's in there before I put it back on. So go ahead and start the engine on, choke it. It's a good sign, fires right up. Hundred and twenty three volts on the on the generators, that's exactly what you want to check. You want to check voltage and frequency. You know, not necessarily concerned about RPM. Um, voltage and frequency is what you want to check. We're at 60, 60 hertz. Hundred and twenty three volts. Basically, that's it idle down until it senses the load. Okay, nice and smooth. Turn the fuel off. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the covers All back right. on. That uh, pretty much concludes the uh, generator um, tune ups for my buddy for the. Uh, uh, his electrical business. So, like I said, these are both the same. So I didn't. I only. I only showed the one. They're uh, made by. It's an import. It's smarter tools, but they do have the uh, Yamaha engine in them. The little MZ80 engine, 2,000 watt uh, output, and uh, they've got the smart idle and everything on it. So they're pretty. I mean, they're quiet. Pretty cool little little compact generator for a job site or even a <clears throat> if you're out camping or something. So. Anyway, you saw how simple it was to pull the cover off 
um, pull the carburetor out, clean it, clean the jets out, put it all back together. The, 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 again, the key thing to remember on generators is be let, pay less attention to the RPM, more attention uh, to the uh, R, to the AC voltage and the frequency. I got to say, in a small generator like this, 120 to 123 volts, 121, 123 volts, and usually at least 60 to 61, 62 hertz. Um, generally, we like to set them up so under a heavy load or, or, or their capacity, say 2,000 watt, it's, when it pulls it down, it'll pull it down to say 118 to 120 volts or right around 60 hertz. So um, that's where I usually like to set them up. Um, on bigger generators, um, you know, I'm used to working on 30, 10,000 to 30,000 watt uh, um, natural gas, propane, and diesel generators. Those are a little different animal, but for little ones like this, they're pretty simple to clean the carburetors. Um, again, when you store, it's better to run ethanol free around here. There's still a couple places that have ethanol free fuel. So if you can get that, it's, it's better to run that because then you don't end up with that gunk building up in them or just if you're going to use them continuously or use them um, at least every month or so, you're probably okay. So anyway, again, I hope this video was helpful. It was just kind of a short little quick throw together. Um, these come in really unexpected. He just called me yesterday and asked me if I could do it. And I had another job coming in later and I thought, you know, I got a free night. Let me uh, hurry up and see if I can knock these out for him. So uh, thanks for watching. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. I uh, appreciate the, uh, welcome the comments if you have any and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.